So we talked about this a little bit before, but the graphing of the derivative function. So in this image here, we have this blue graph. This is going to be our original function f of x. And what I just wanted to show are kind of the different way these ways these values can show up with our first derivative. So let's talk about these critical value points. So what we can see with this first one is this sharp corner, which we actually just looked at in that last video. And that's a case where our derivative is undefined. So it can be making this sharp corner and kind of changing trend there. And then we have these other cases with minimums, maximums, or flat values um, where our derivative is equal to zero. So those are also critical values. So when we're grabbing those critical values, we're looking for where the derivative is equal to zero, but then also where that derivative function is undefined. Then once we have those critical values and we can evaluate them in terms of increasing, decreasing, concave up, concave down to get an idea of the trends at those spots, um, what we can also do is think about intervals using our first derivative test of where are we increasing and where are we decreasing. So here we would just be reading left to right, so seeing that we're increasing, that's where our first derivative would be zero, or sorry, more than zero. And then decreasing, our derivative is less than zero. And increasing, more than zero, increasing more than zero, decreasing less than zero. So if we start to want to draw the derivative function, the critical values will give us spots where we're crossing the x-axis, except for where our function's undefined. That could come through, like in this case, it would show up as an asymptote on our derivative function. Because look at these, if you imagine these tangent lines, so this is very positive, and then it ends up almost being vertical, so it's very, very steep right there. That's giving me a tangent line with a slope that is close to infinity, in case positive infinity here. And then over here, it would actually be negative. So if I was graphing the derivative function, I would maybe be seeing something going off to positive infinity, negative infinity, with this spot itself acting as an asymptote because our derivative function is undefined there. Then if our function, our original function is increasing, that's where the derivative is positive, so we would be graphing above the x-axis. And then when our function is decreasing, where the derivative is less than zero, we'd be graphing below the x-axis. So we would just switch between above and below the x-axis in terms of if our original function was increasing or decreasing, because that relates to our derivative function being positive or negative. And then when we switch these trends, that's typically where our derivative is equal to zero, so it'd end up as just a coordinate on the x-axis. So let's try this out. We have a company's bank balance B in millions of dollars. T weeks after releasing a new product is down in the graph below. So we have this graph here. Sketch a graph of the marginal balance. So remember, marginal for us is now this idea of the derivative. So we have this function b of t, and we want to graph b prime of t. So that will give us our marginal balance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the graph a little bit because this doesn't really show below the x-axis. You can go ahead and... Um, no, I take it back. I am going to draw on top of this graph because it can be nice to have it on top of itself. So what I just need to recognize is we're going to need to go below the x-axis because we're going to have spots that have negative slopes to them. So what I do first is I look for critical values. So I go looking for all of my relative minimums, relative maximums, any flat spots, basically anywhere where the tangent line is equal to zero. And what's going to happen for our graph is our x-axis is going to stay exactly the same. So where our y, sorry, t-axis, t, and then where this 1 through 7 on the y-axis would be relating to f of x, I'm going to graph, I'm going to do this in blue with the derivative, 
and I, I can leave the y-axis just like that. It's not the best, but we're not going to calculate actual slopes here. But I'm going to keep what is key is that t stays the same. So what's going to happen is I'm going to take these spots where the graph was flat, or sorry, where the tangent line would be flat. So we have this minimum value at what looks like, I don't know, x equals 0.5, x equals 0.6. So graphing the derivative function, that's where we would be crossing the t-axis. And then we have this maximum value at a little, let's see, that looks pretty close to 3, maybe a little above 3. And it has this maximum value of like 6.5. But I'm going to go ahead and draw that on the t-axis as well. So those relative minimum and maximum values show up as coordinates on the t-axis or the x-axis. Let's check t there. All right, then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna think about how we switch from increasing to decreasing. So I found these kind of dividing points with that minimum and maximum value. And let's see, to the left of that first minimum value, we're decreasing, then we're increasing, and then we're decreasing. And what I'm going to kind of notice here is if I think about the slopes of the tangent lines, it's getting flatter and flatter. So what I'm going to do is make a little note to myself is that like out here, slope is approaching zero. Which might be kind of difficult to see because the graph is approaching zero. But it's also that if you imagine those little tangent lines, it's getting flatter and flatter until maybe it would be a flat tangent line. And that's really what we're looking at here. So decreasing versus increasing, what's gonna happen is that's gonna describe how I graph below and above the x-axis. So I'm below the x-axis for decreasing parts of the function, and I'm above for increasing parts, because that's where we have positive tangent lines versus negative tangent lines. So what I'm going to do is, in fact, I'll just kind of shade this in with these intervals. So between 0 and that 0 0.5, 0 0.6, this will be below. And then we'll switch to above. And then we'll be below. And then what we could kind of see here for this below side, so we have a slope of 0, and then it's a negative slope, negative slope. It becomes more and more negative, but then it starts flattening again. So with that, we're going to get closer to zero. So what I'm kind of imagining over here is that we're going to go below the x-axis, then we're going to be coming back to the x-axis because that's where our slope is equal to zero. All right, so graphing this. Let's go ahead. Let's see, that's very steep there. So maybe we're coming in like this, and then we're above, and then we need to turn around and hit that t-axis again and we're going below the t-axis and then we're going to approach zero in the long run for our graph. All right so what we have here in terms of the original function from 0 to 0 0.5 it's that we have these negative slopes or our graph is decreasing until we reach that 0.5 so I'm seeing here is negative slopes that are approaching zero and then hit 0 at 0 0.5. And then we have an increasing function, so we leave 0, and then we have these positive slopes. It's going to reach some maximum positive slope there at the inflection point, and then it's going to go back to 0 while still being increasing. We still have positive slopes, so we still have positive values, but then we hit 0. And then from that slope of zero, we're going to have negative slopes, and we're going to have negative slopes. And it's going to reach this maximum negative slope. Again, this will actually be an inflection point because we have concave down, then concave up. So we have this turning point here where we need to go back towards the t-axis because our slopes are approaching zero, which is what the t-axis represents. So you could also do is start to kind of visualize the inflection points. So if this graph here is our derivative function, the critical values of our derivative function, so like I'd have this peak here at about 2-ish, two, two and then I did kind of a dip there. 
that's where the second derivative would be zero, and that would line up with the inflection points on our original graph. So where we're changing concavity between concave up and concave down, because that's where we're seeing this change in trend of where our second derivative would be positive, zero, second derivative's negative, zero, second derivative's positive. So concave up, concave down, concave up. So all these different layers that connect with each other.